Look, Dozer, why don't we just go to see the mayor, then we'll go to the cleric. You look fine. Fix Thuft. Who cares about Thuft? Thuft will be fine. We can fix him later. D just give him your damn potion. Goes our drink potion. Give Thuft Shaft potion. Uh, my potion? No, Shaft potion. My potion. Oh, okay, wait. We're, no need to get hasty here. I, we have a little bit of time. We can probably stop by the cleric before we see the mayor. But now, let's listen to what happened last time on the Encourageable Party. All the windows and, like, doors look, like, boarded up, right? Just, like, it seems like they've taken every defense to, or every every length to, to make sure that nothing could get through. So there's no, like, door or entryway or anything? No, not at, not at currently where, where you are. Do you guys want me to uh, try to get on top of this barricade and see what's on the other side? You see what looks like this giant metallic bull as it's kind of charging and ramming into this wall that you are now standing on. Oh yeah, she's toast as she takes... I don't even know if I want to tell you what damage she takes. Oh no. <laughs> he deals a lot of damage. She takes 27 damage oh. from this this horn's just gutter. That's the thing. Falls if you didn't use shield, like you would have been dead. Yes, I, I can. I can take you to the church. Is uh, is your other archer here able? Yeah, if you could take us to the mayor, if if someone could uh, take our buddy Gozer here to the cleric, uh, she really needs to see a priest. Well, I mean, surely we can stop in to church on the way. We can't. Okay, if it's on the way, that's great. See Gozer, it's Aldrin all fine. Gozer doesn't have any objections to that. I'm. I don't mind making a pit stop on the way. Okay, so now can the adventure continue? Yes. Now, adventure, continue. So this guard is going to uh, take you guys to the, the cleric and to see the mayor. That's where you guys want to go? Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, where are we going? We're going to the cleric, right? Yeah, that's where we want to go. The soft hurt. Yeah, poor soft. Yeah, so like come all, all the other, the, the, you know, there were archers up top, the, the few that didn't fall over. Uh, the side of the wall as the this bull was ramming it. They kind of, you know, come down the stairs and they, they pull open the gate and start pulling in the the, the, the people that were turned to stone outside as as the as the one uh, guy that Bryn spoke to starts taking you into into the city of Goldham. So basically kind of around where this wall has been constructed, like when you first jumped in, like it's it's just empty. It's almost like ghost townish, right? Like some some buildings have clearly been vacated. Um, maybe even some businesses that like have been like boarded or boarded up just to protect whatever value the 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 building might have. And as you get further and further into into the city of Goldham, like it's it's you know the population is becoming more and more dense. As people have they've been just kind of filing closer and closer into the into the middle of the city right just to get the get farther and farther away from where these attacks are occurring so you're you guys are he just leads you basically right into the into the heart of of Goldham. so i i have a quick question how long have we been here you have only i think you've only been here maybe an hour or so uh maybe maybe two how far away is zexa from Goldham, from a traveling stand why do you want to go back to zexa I'm just curious. We might have to head back that way. Zexa would be uh, a little short of a, a day. Uh, maybe more like six-ish hours. No, want to go, Zexa. Yeah, I don't either, Shadow. I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying this out loud. I. I was uh, DM questioning. Uh oh, you need to put I your hand on your head. I started role playing oh, there. <laughs> there we go. What was your answer for how long we'd been here again, Leland? An hour. Uh, an hour, maybe two. Okay. Um, you know, is, you, you guys filtered, kind of filtered through the rubble, and you had a couple of skirmishes, right? Okay. All right. Where's this cleric? Yeah. So he, he arrives. He takes you base to this kind of si it's pretty sizable, even from the outside. Uh, this building, and as you walk up to it, kind of down this main, what seems to be a main thoroughfare, it's got uh, quite a bit of foot traffic. Uh, as it's, it's a, I think it's about. Uh, mid to late afternoon and on the front of this building there's this 
big set of double doors de depicts this uh, it's a s slender young woman. She's got like long flowing hair uh, wearing this exquisite looking gown with two sleeping lions resting at her feet. And it, it looks like, like this mural has been painted with some kind of like golden paint. And he, the guard kind of, here, here's the church. You sh you'll, should be able to find some help in here. Okay. I think we walk up to the door and just open it. Yeah, it's open. Oh, okay. And in we walk. Yeah, so you walk into this large square hall. It's about 40 feet long, five or six rows of pews on either side of this main aisle that leads to an altar. Um, very, very stereotypical church, churchy kind of looking, right? But these pews, they're like, uh, they're upholstered with what looks like silk. Uh, there's large uh, tapestries of uh, like sprouting daffodils hanging from all the walls. It looks very, very posh, This the inside of this, this church. And uh, kind of down uh, at the altar, there's this, this frail looking woman. She's kind of hunched over this bandaged man, just kind of tending to his wounds. And you can see in the pews, there are like uh, a sm smattering of other people. Uh, some of them look wounded uh, as if they've, like, they've been helped and kind of patched and they're kind of recovering, but there's other people there probably for worship. Okay, I'm going to carry Thuft up to the woman and hold him out and say, Fix Thuft. Oh, oh. And she, she's wearing, she's kind of bespectacled as she lowers them as you get right up to her. Uh, oh, hello, hello, yes. Uh, of course, of course. Just I'll quickly tend, tend to this young man and... And we'll get right to your thuft, did you call it? Yet yeah, now. Now, fix thuft. Oh, well, hold, hold on, hold on one second. I'm going to get in between her and the man. Fix thuft. Now, now, <laughs> young lady, before anyone will be fixing anyone else, there is the matter of payment. So please, step aside as this man Those has already has paid. money, and I grab out like 20 gold coins and throw them at her. Fix thuft. Mm, yes, again, wait your turn. And she tries to walk past you. I'm going to walk up there, too, and sort of touch her, reach up and touch her on the shoulder and say, uh, it might be a good idea to fix the, the thuft guy first. Let me just say, unless you have somebody here that can fix you. Oh, d d don't you worry. I will be quite all right. I look over at Gozer and go, she said she'd be fine. I'm going to glower and kind of, oh, and like pout like a child. <laughs> cradle thuft because I don't want to hurt this lady because she's my chance to fix thuft so I can't hurt her so I'm cradling ah. thuft and just waiting my turn I, Falzrin's intrigued that this this seemingly frail old lady thinks that she's going to be fine with towering gozer threatening her well she she like, it just kind of puts a hand on, on the, the man's forehead and you know kind of this radiant light kind of emitted, emitted from, from her palm and the man kind of stands, gets to his feet, and saunters, you know, to one of the, the back pews and just kind of sits to, to, to rest a little bit. Oh, okay, okay, let that out. Let's see. You, 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 my dear, are, are, are a, little, a little surly, so I'm afraid 20 gold is not going to cut it. What need? Well, let's, let's start with doubling it. Okay, I take out another 20, throw it, and I hand it to her. <laughs> okay. Now, I assume... A, a simple, a simple gear wound spell will do just nicely for this young man. Yes, yes, that's what you're looking for. Goes there no priest? You fixed thuft. She kind of kneels down to this unconscious thuft and kind of, you know, takes his head in her hands and kind of looks him over a little bit. So, um, I think what so this is kind of this is the first time you've really encountered like hiring like a, like spell services, right? There's not there's not like a set uh, pricing guide in the player's handbook or anything. Uh, I actually found a really nice PDF online that I'm going to use the prices from. But uh, so, but what I decided to do is instead of rolling the healing, you just you'll you'll get your full money's worth, whatever the the level of the spell or, or what, what the die that the spell would dictate will automatically be maxed whenever you procure these type of services nice that's awful kind so she you know does 
similar thing that she just did to the to the the young man, and this light kind of filters into Thuft and heals him for for ten hit points, and he kind of gasps, ah, ah, King, 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 oh oh, there there you are, King, there, yeah, what what happened? Where where are those bug things? Did, and I'm gonna push Thuft aside. And kind of bring the lady with me away from everybody else. And kind of say to her real quiet, Gozer needs heal. Go- Gozer tired. Oh, interesting. And she raises her hands up to you and kind of waits for your uh, affirmation that she can put her hands on you. I, I just lower myself so she can reach me. And she, yeah, she kind of does this kind of same thing. You know, she like takes your head in her hands like... Maybe curls a lip up and say, ah, <laughs> and you know, lowers your... Ah. My word, what what have you gotten into? I'm afraid this one is going to be, be quite costly. How much? Well, well, powerful magic. One that I can't cast every day, all day. I'm afraid this will take a greater restoration. How much? Now, you're kind of coming around, and you're calm down a little bit so the price won't quite be as jacked up as it was but it's still going to cost you 400 gold pieces ouch can can the rest of the party hear this no or i pulled her, you pulled guys her away okay yeah i know goals are give you 300 well well and as you offer that kind of through the the door of the church kind of b- bursts open and a group of guards like carrying the the petrified the stone people f- from the from the bullfight, they're kind of bursting there. Mother Celesta, quickly, quickly! We need we need your services. And they're dragging these three statues with them. Oh, oh my goodness! Well, uh, you uh, you will have to get in line. Now you know you have to help with the paid up front. Any services we need, you know the mayor covers it. Service. I helped. I helped you not die. You wait your turn. You look perfectly able. This, these people are stone. They're not going anywhere. Well, she, she does have a point. I mean, but uh, it's it seems that the four hundred, as the the guard has mentioned, is prepaid, uh, courtesy of Mayor Lakely. So three hundred, I'm afraid, is not going to cut it. Goals are not happy. I think at this point I'm going to go on a rampage, and I'm just going to flip out, and I'm going to start destroying things in the church. Oh no! I'm just going to just not any people, just the pews and, and any kind of statuary or anything. I'm just going to start going berserk. <laughs> what are you doing first? Yeah, <laughs> good next question. To me. So okay, well on the altar, kind of behind you guys, there's uh, a, a, a large statue of. It looks like it's depicting the same woman that was in the golden mural. Um, and then, yeah, there's like the, the hanging tapestries uh, on all the walls and the, the the swanky looking pews. That's kind of... Any like poorly crafted wooden benches nearby maybe that would be easy to replace? Nothing in this building looks poorly crafted or <laughs> cheap. Oh no. I'm going to break the statue. Relax, I'm gonna hit the altar. I'm going to... Pound on some pews. It's like a like a, a life size statue. You want to try to tip the statue over? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna push on it. Yeah. Did we hear Mother Celesta say 300's not gonna cut it? You hear? Yeah, you hear here, and of course the interchange between the guards. But uh, okay, Gozer, you okay. want to try to push the statue? Make, <laughs> make yep. a strength check. That's uh, am I just adding my strength modifier? So that would be 19. Okay. <laughs> so you tip. <laughs> you start to tip this statue as it just kind of slowly you know one end kind of comes off under your under your pressure and you are successfully push it over as it falls to the back of this altar and kind of cracks in half okay uh, while this is going on and she runs over and starts to push it over did we see where the money was placed that Gozer gave to Mother Celestia I suppose you saw Gozer throw down 20 gold on the ground, and then you, uh, I don't know, Gozer, how serapetious were you do being about handing off the rest of it to her? 
I hadn't hand, I handed her the 20 for soft, so that would have been out in the open. It wasn't until after right. I was asking for myself that right, I right, right, right. Exactly. was being quiet. And I hadn't paid her anything for that because 300 wasn't enough. Did she put it in a pouch? Did she put it in a box? I mean, where did she place that money one hand? Uh, the 20 gold would be on her person, I guess. Okay. But, like, she didn't stoop to pick up the gold yet. That just goes up through on the ground, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I, guess, I mean, I was going to go talk to Bryn and say, uh, you know, maybe she could she could lift some coin and we can make up for the extra hundred we don't have. Well, I didn't have a chance to say that, like, while Gozer and all this was going on, I, I wandered to a side and I was like lighting a candle. Um, I was, I'm like a decent little bit away. I think I'm yeah. a, I'm Falzern's a little bit uh, taken aback that we've just come across this healer who's casting magic spells to heal people and help the sick and Gozer's gonna you know smash things in this church so I'm gonna yell at him when Gozer does say Gozer what are you doing stop that and I'm gonna run over and try and grab the statue from the she other side she already cracked it <laughs> well I mean it already happened huh? okay well uh, it's the DM's call do you think I would have time to make it over and try and hold the statue up uh, I don't know she rolled a pretty good strength check Okay. Uh, if Falzerin comes near me, <laughs> of course, I'm going to go. lash out at him. Okay, but so okay, Gozer has to push the statue over. Now, if anyone you wants to do something, you have a time to do something before these guards are going to react. So there, there's about there are two guards kind of on each statue. There's so there's six guards that came in with these three uh, petrified people. <laughs> I'm going to say, what three hundred three hundred gold for what? What the hell are you talking about? You're a hundred shy of... What What the hell's going on? What the hell are you doing, Gozer? <laughs> Falls are in there, Bryn. Do you want to do, do or say something? I mean, now that I hear Shaft yelling that loud, I'll step a bit closer. You certainly and, uh, also heard the, the, the crash of the statue. Oh, for sure. I am, uh, I'm going to sneak over to Gozer, and I'm going to have my hands in the air, you know, like, so she can see my hands, and I'll say... Gozer, Gozer, what are we doing? So, is anyone going to react to what Shaft said? Well, I've already yelled at Gozer, and I'll take back that if I wasn't able to make it over there in time okay. to try and hold the statue up, then I'm just going to stay put. Okay, and Thuft, he kind of runs over to one of these pews. Yeah, 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 King, yeah, let's break stuff! And tries to lift this pew <laughs> and flip it himself. <laughs> uh, ooh! Yeah, no, not quite enough. He gets it <laughs> off the ground, but can't quite tip it, as uh, there's actually somebody sitting on it. <laughs> this is this is madness. What are you guys doing? This this cleric here just healed Thuft and was offering she her won't services. She will do what she need to do. Well, Gozer, there's a price for everything. These guards uh, will uh, draw their, their short swords. What, what the hell are you doing? You've just helped us. Okay. Stop! Everybody stop for a second here. Now, Mother Celestia, how much did that statue cost, you think? Oh, oh my, my. <laughs> At, uh, priceless. More more than a hundred gold, I assume, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and there's a lot of other crap around here that's probably worth a lot more than a hundred gold, right? Well, we are a wealthy city. Well, okay, well, she can keep breaking stuff until you decide the value is not really there for the spell that she's asking you to cast. What the hell are you asking her to cast? I don't answer you. It, uh, she's been afflicted by something very powerful. It requires powerful magic to undo. Can you do it? Of course. But again. Okay. The price. Everything has a price. Bryn looks over at Mother Celeste and she's Celeste and she's like, uh, yeah, priceless price? Come on. We're telling you right now, she will wreck this place if you don't heal her. Think about your stuff. First off, we're been, we've been summoned here by Mayor Lakely to begin with, so if they've already prepaid, I'm sure we're good. So go ahead and use Mayor Lakely's money to pay for whatever Gozer wants. That's no, true. No, that's, that's not how it works. Are you, are you part of the Golden Guard? No. Gozer was guarding. If I get you a note from Mayor Lakely to say that... The tab's covered. Will you do it? 
Of, of, of course. If Blakely will pay, then yes. Gozer, can you continue on with your affliction for a little while longer while we go see the mayor? Whatever your problem is. Yeah, so easy Gozer for you to say, tired. Shaft. We had to... We had to drop everything when you got a little hair on your chest. I mean, come on. Well, that was important. Oh, yeah. Let's go Gozer's to see the mayor. Important. Fine. Gozer, see the mayor. Good. All right. You can put your swords away, fellas. Everything's fine. No. They, uh, the six of them will escort the four of you out of this church. What about theft? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. The f- no, they want to keep their keeping four and a half. theft as uh, collateral. I'm sorry. This <laughs> no, is, they're not. This is your payment for the statue. <laughs> no, they're not. Nope. <laughs> and uh, Mother Celeste kind of uh, calls one back and writes out this little note and hands it to him. This is t- for the mayor. And uh, <laughs> six of them will take you out of this church. <laughs> okay. Uh, who Let's did, who did mayor, she hand the guys. note to? Uh, Mother Celeste just handed the note to one of the guards to, to give to the mayor. The guards? Mm-hmm. These are the guards that were on the wall with us, right? Uh, some of them were, yeah. Okay. I said, guys, let's take us to the mayor. Where, did you want to say something to them, Bryn? I want to see that note. You can try, <laughs> you can try to pickpocket yeah, the can I try to? Yeah, can I try to pickpocket the guard? Okay, so they started taking you. Uh, why don't you roll me a sleight of hand check? Yes! 22. Okay, you, you, okay, you, yeah, you successfully <laughs> slip it out of this guard's pocket, and it's just kind of this yes. folded, this folded piece, piece of paper that just says, build them for the statue. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, put the note back, sneakily. You want to put it back in his pocket? Yeah. That will require oh, another. Oh, oh! You know what? No, 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 no! I don't want. I don't want the mayor to get that. No, never mind. Let me see. I'm going to chew it up and swallow it. <laughs> I mean, or or you could just drop it on the ground. <laughs> I want to eat it. It's dramatic. Right. You ate it. Yeah, it's in my mouth. Mm. Okay, roll roll a Constitution check because <laughs> she knew you would eat it, and now it's covered in poison. 18. <laughs> okay, so they. <laughs> oh my goodness. I did roll a constitution. Yeah, just I know you did. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> the paper didn't poison you. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the church is actually not far from uh, kind of the mayor's office, and they take you to uh, a, a larger building, and it serves uh, the one of the guard, kind of, you know, the guard that. One of the ones that was a little more friendly with you and had seen what you did on the wall. It's kind of confused at the half orc's outburst, but he's willing to at least converse with you. And he just kind of explains, like, yeah, this is this is the the where the mayor's office is. The whole building is kind of more of like a governmental building, more than just the the mayor's office is, is inside of it. But as you get up to it, like uh, posted outside, there's like two two more guards um, kind of standing standing at their post, right? And you walk in into kind of what's uh you know it's like a like a reception area okay is anybody in there like somebody who would receive us yeah there's a person uh seated behind a desk you know kind of more almost like serving as like a a directory more than anything all right we've been summoned here by mayor lakely we are uh, expected you've been you've been summoned yes uh for what business there was there was a note sent to uh, Dracal asking for us to come and speak with Mayor Lakely. The business is between he and I. And well, and me friend. too. Yeah, friend. we we're we're hired for a job here. Mayor Lakely needs to see us. Oh, another one, eh? Okay. Uh, yeah, you just go up the stairs, take a left and a right, then a left, left, right, and you'll get right to his office. Was that left, right, left, left, right, or? Left, right, left, right, right. That was pretty close. Yep. Okay. <laughs> we'll find. We'll find it. <laughs> Bryn's having like a bit of a reaction to the another one, like, uh, so like she's feeling a little bit less uh, special. <laughs> she's kind of ticked off. You should start breaking things. <laughs> uh, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Th- 
Thuff's still trying to flip stuff. He kind of runs up to. <laughs> <laughs> look at me, King. Look, look, look at me. Look at me. Good Thuff. Hey, control your Thuffed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thuff, fine. So we'll go to the mayor's office. Left, right, left, left, right. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, again, like even outside of uh, outside of the mayor's office, you see two more guards posted. Did the the six guards come with us? They didn't uh, go with you up to the office, but they they kind of stayed in in the the like the reception area. You didn't see them leave the building. Okay, so we'll walk up to the door, and I'll go up and try to open it. Uh, and it is it does open. I'll walk in. All right. They don't. They don't seem to do anything when I do that. The two guards. No, they do not. Okay. okay. So his office. It's like as lustrously decorated as the church was. Maybe like even more so. So this big, like dark, stained oak desk. Uh, again, more of the silk upholstery and on a couple ch- a set of chairs uh, in front of it. Y- you know, on on the kind of like on every wall, there's uh, like a portrait of a man. And as you're, you know, you see the, this Mayor Lakely seated at this desk. These are clearly, like, egregious self-portraits. <laughs> maybe some <laughs> of them are a little <laughs> a little overblown as far as uh, maybe some of his looks and some of his features, but... Bryn looks over at Gozer and is like, don't touch anything. Gozer not touch. Okay, let's just chill. Mayor Lakely. Mm, hello, 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 hello. And, uh, who would you be? Ah, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor Lakely. Uh, Blake Lakely, it, it, yes, Mayor Blake Lakely. Blake, Blake, you say? Yes, Blake uh, Lakely. Like I, 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 Blake? I prefer the whole, I prefer my full, the full name. Blake Lakely. Mr. Blake Lakely. We are, uh, happy to meet your acquaintance, <laughs> fine sir. You had, uh, s- uh, sent message to, um, a Mr. Detmer. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. Um, you are, boy. It, it took you it took you quite quite your time to 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 get here. Yeah, we we had to do some stuff. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Well, that uh, stuff may may have cost you quite a bit of money. Gozer, Gozer growls. Wait, wait, Gozer. See, uh, about that. What exactly are you summoning us here so we? to do so we can decide if the money's enough to waste our time. Oh, well, well I, I, I thought <laughs> Blake Lakely is always very clear with his intentions. If uh, if Zedmer misrepresented Blake Lakely's intentions, well, I'm afraid that that's quite quite unfortunate, but you just need to shut down these these Paladin's hours, as I'm sure you've seen on your way in what they've been doing to my city. Can, can they ask why? I mean, what have they been doing to your city? I mean, it looks like a hellhole out there, but, you know, why? Why? How do you know the towers are doing that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you know about these towers, Mayor? I, I simply know what they've been doing, what they do to the land and what they do to the, the wildlife, and that they may be this tool used by the paladins in their search for something. What, what do you mean, what they do to the land and the wildlife? Well, I'm, surely you've... You know the history of the paladins and their use of these towers over the past 35 years? I've heard rumors and such, but... Uh, humor us, Mayor Blake Lakely. Tell us the history of these towers. Everywhere they go, everywhere they're erected. Dead land, dead people, dead animals, dead everything. Used up, the land used up and thrown. Thrown away as soon as the paladins get what they, what they want from it. So why haven't you sent your guards or anybody here in uh, Goldham to go take out these towers? Well, unfortunately, I can't spare the manpower, hence the third-party help. You haven't sent anybody there to even check it out to get an idea. Oh, you you what aren't to do? you aren't the only hired help. So there's plenty of bands that have come to see me and gotten the same information I'm giving to you. Have any? And have none of them come back, right? None of them returned. As of yet, job unfinished. But they do have a few days ahead start, I'll tell you that. Mm. What do you think the paladins are trying to accomplish with these towers? What's the purpose of them? Again, it's strictly rumors that their, their leader, Samuel, is searching for something. Or some things. What sort of things? Hey, rumors of, of, of possibly a powerful weapon. Some sort of, some sort of artifact. 
I don't know. And you think these towers are his way of searching? I don't know what else they could be for. It seems more to me like they're sucking the life force out of the surrounding fauna, but I'm not sure how that could be in search of something. Well, lucky for you, the job isn't to get that information. Well, Mayor Blake Likely. Brin's like him. Im- Blake Likely takes great offense. Brin's like imitating to Your be price offensive. Has dropped by a thousand gold. Okay, Mayor look, Blake Likely. Brin. All right, Brin. Brin doesn't mean any harm. Settle here. down. Okay, okay, okay. I look at him and I'm like, all right, Blake. If you want us to get this job done, and I know you've already sent parties out ahead of us, whatever, whatever. We're the best in the biz. We need a little bit of money to help heal our buddy over here. And I I look over at Gozer. Uh, She's she's a bit afflicted. I mean, that's what they said. Some kind of strong magic. She's also kind of of our muscle, so... I know. I think it's in your best interest to help us out and maybe give us some cash up front. Am I allowed to roll a persuasion or anything like that, Leland? Sure. You notice while you're saying all that, Gozer looks ashamed that she needs this help. Oh, frig. Well, even though I'm trained in persuasion, I do terribly, so... What was your total? Uh, six. Alright. Um, Blake Lakely kind of looks looks you guys over, kind of looks at Gozer. <laughs> her, her bashfulness. Well, as as part of part of the contract stipulated to, to come visit Blake Lakely, I am willing to give the party's help. It's in my best interest that the job gets complete. Every every party that has come to me since I've offered them some some items that could aid them. If for you the aid would be gold and a and a uh, what exactly was the, the gold for? The cure and affliction. Well, yeah, it's it's to go back to uh, Mother Celesta and get get some healing for her. But I mean, I think we could all use a little help if you have any more items or things you're you're mentioning. Well, uh, that's, what's, that's what I'm getting to. It's it's going to have to be an, an either or. I mean, how could I put you on more of a uh, have to keep the living play uh, playing field level for? Here's the way I see it, buddy. We just saved a bunch of your dudes back at the wall. Yeah, we did. And uh, I think I think we're probably even there. So all we need is a note from you to tell Mother Celestia to to get Gozer here uh, up to snuff before we take off. And then uh, the monetary agreement that we had with Detmer is fine. He just told us you had some more information. I don't really think you had a lot more information here, uh, not that we already knew. So I think we'll be on our way as soon as uh, you get Gozer a note here to help her out. And if you got anything else that can help us along the way, I think that might be a good time to give it to us. Why don't you roll a persuasion check? Uh, that would be a nine. <laughs> We're Come doing on, real Shaft. well. <laughs> well, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to wait for my guard's field report to really know what happened at the gate, as, as you infer. But uh, like I said, I would be happy to write you a note for Mother Celesta to heal your friend. Hell, the guards, the guards are down in the foyer there. You want me to go grab one of them? We have proper channels here. That's not how it works. I thought you were in a hurry to get this done. As I said, I'm not hinging on it being done with you, Voke. You are already two days behind. For all I know, a band is on their way. My power, tower-powered items in tow. <laughs> Power-tower? What? <laughs> uh, okay, right, so... I'm gonna let that slide. So, Blake... <laughs> Can this note say that, uh, you know, all debts are paid and Gozer can be healed? Like, you know, just be very inclusive with with, with the way you word it. You know what I mean? Uh, you have outstanding debts with Mother No, Sister. no, no. We don't have any debts. But I'm saying, you know, like, the payment for healing her. Like, it's all, we're all good. Like, you know, when you write the note, just say, uh... I think what my friend Brent's yeah. trying to say is that we want to make sure... Whatever healing needs to be done, whatever services we're going to owe to Mother Celesta will be covered by the mayor, yourself. Does that sound fair? Well, I, I'm not about to write a blank check for you to utilize Mother Celesta's services. You think I'm an idiot? No. Uh, no. I, have to, I have to tell I'm you, s- you so far are my least likable party that I've encountered on I, this I, job. I was just going to say, you know, a fellow like yourself, I mean, look... 
the portraits, the the luxurious uh, office, and you're obviously someone of great importance. And and your word would be enough for Mother Celestia just to give us whatever we need. I mean, there we all know that the power of Goldham and the riches within Goldham, and uh, the, the the being the mayor, you're you're the highest ranking official here. We know that uh, all you have to do is just you know. With a, with a swipe of your hand, anything that you want here in the city would be would be done. Would you agree? Oh, well, of course. I'm, I'm the mayor. I'm Mayor Blake Langley. Exactly. So uh, all we really ask is a note to have her up to speed so we can go out and do what you need done. We're here to make you look good for your people. Yes, yes, uh, the people could use a win. Uh, this, Mind you, I could care less about the people really it's just the commerce that's been affected it's really really hurting my revenue stream right mm. and you don't you don't want that nobody wants no, it, that it, it, it does not need to continue it uh, i mean goldham is the is the pinnacle of a spar i mean i think you'd agree well <laughs> a more modest man may may disagree but uh, that certainly is not mayor blake likely <laughs> but right but right now when you come to goldham i mean when we came in there's pits and traps and and the walls are all caved in and I mean this is this is not looking good for you. You know, we really need to get moving to, to get this stuff cleaned up for you and, and, and get us uh, get us paid and on our way. So us bickering and arguing about this is seems to be uh, getting us nowhere and, and we, we know all you need to do is write us a, a little note and we'll be on our way and, and get this wrapped up for you. Of course. A note. Fine. A note. Easy. Pulls up, kind of opens the drawer and pulls out some parchment and a little feather and an inkwell. Just kind of scratches something out. While he's doing this, Bryn goes over to Gozer and she says, I think he has more information than he's not telling us. Go threaten him. Gozer told not to threaten. I mean, don't you think he's hiding? Like, he's got to know more than he's telling us. He seems useless to me. Okay. It's up to you, but I mean... I'd be okay with you threatening him. <laughs> but he get to me healed. That's, I mean, that's true. You, you, you stop trying to get King in trouble. No, King, you just, let's just get this and get out of here. We gotta help you. You gotta, you gotta get healthy. I look at Thuft and I start pulling my rapier out. And I just like, give him like I growl. A, yeah. I growl at Bryn. Thuft starts pulling his short sword out. I put my hand in front of Thuff's face. I just like to show it to him. I'm not gonna... I put my hand in front of Thuff's face and kind of push him behind me and, and kind of glower at Bryn. And I'm like, okay, Gozer. Jeez, gosh. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, and so he's so, signing so the, the mayor, Yes, he kind of writes this, this note and stands up from his chair and kind of walks around his desk to, to hand the note to, uh, to Shaft. Do, uh, can I uh, do an insight or like observe this mayor? Do I see anything fishy? Sure, go, you go, roll an insight check. Something is not right. Oh yeah, my insight is twenty-five. Okay, wow. You uh, you get you kind of get the sense that this guy his his position of power is not quite what it seems. His standoffishness, you kind of understand that 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 seems to be like what this guy does. But it does seem like he may uh, know a little more than, than what he's letting on. I knew it. He gave me the note. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put it in my pocket and I'm going to go turn to Brandon and go, Oh yeah, what about the note from the uh, cleric you were supposed to give to him? Uh, what note? The one she gave you. When, he didn't, when uh, the cleric didn't give me a note. Oh really? Oh, yeah, she gave I the guard a note. They'll give it to him. Oh, it's a guy. It's the guy down in the foyer down there. He has the notes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's. it's yeah, a... there was a note. Roll a deception check, Brent. Oh, thirteen. Okay. Uh, Blake Lakely kind of. <laughs> he's, he's a little <laughs> confused. He's confused at this interchange, but uh, he's not about to press press you on the details of it. Hey, we got what we need. Let's get out of here. With my inside of twenty five, do I see anything? I mean, maybe you'll have me roll a new one, but do I see anything on the on the desk? Like, information, papers, that I could, like, 
slip um, in my so pocket. In, insight is is uh, more judging a, a person and kind of their their mannerisms. So if you wanna if you wanna do a more uh, like a more in like uh, detailed just kind of scope of the room, you can roll a perception check. Like. Well, like basically now that I think he's got like withholding a bit, shady, right. I want to see look around if there's anything that I might be able to steal or observe. Uh, yeah, like like on his desk or something. Roll a perception you know? check. Roll a perception check. Man, I'm rolling good tonight. Twenty one. Okay, so uh, on his desk, you can kind of there's again more kind of rolls of, of parchment and uh, like the very top one kind of looks like this, uh, like basically like a, a building order. It doesn't look too important. It's kind of just something mundane about authorizing some type of construction. But kind of behind his desk, uh, now that he's he's kind of pushed his chair out of the way as he got up, mm-hmm. you see, like, set into the wall what looks like uh, a, a small safe and a kind of compartment above it that is housed, in, like, again, in, in a recess into the wall, it kind of houses this uh, a slim wooden box. Did he come out from behind the desk? He did, yeah. He's now kind of standing, like, in So the there's a safe with a box, like, on top of it, like, out Basic, of the safe? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna position myself between the desk and Blake Lakely, so that he can't see what Bren's doing. Cause you like and noticed I'm, I'm like eyeing it. Okay. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say to him, "You pretty." <laughs> <laughs> Flirting oh. with him. Oh well, 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 yes, yes. Uh, not the first time Blake Lakely has been called pretty. <laughs> and you, uh, you, you are a half orc. You observant. While I see Gozer take that step right in between and block <laughs> the vision. Okay, hold on. Okay, Gozer, can you make me a performance check, please? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, twelve. Okay, now Bryn, what would you like to do? I would like to uh, try to snatch this box. Oh, how okay. big is it? How uh, big the is box, it? The box. It's about. Uh, it's about two feet wide and you not quite you can't quite tell how deep it goes because it's in like this recess of wall right but it's about meh, more like 18 inches wide is it something that like i could pop open and snatch whatever's in there possibly you'd ha- you would have to pull it out of its kind of little cubby hole though if you roll a 35 uh. maybe so 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 like it's like 18 inches long and it stands about three or four inches tall again you can't tell how deep this cubby is um but that's about the size of it okay so i would like to go I would like to try to go over to this wall and uh, pop the box out and then, like, duck down so that the box and I are bo- behind the desk. Okay. So that, like, he if he turned around, he might not see us. Sure, type sure. Thing. Okay, uh, roll a sleight of hand. Yes, 21. Okay. Uh, I'm now. really so good today. It's a good thing, because we're about to lose our job. Roll me a stealth check as you kind of duck and hide. As soon as I say that, I should have knocked on wood. Okay. That would be a 20, not natural. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, observancy is is, part, is really part of the gig. I mean, you can't, you can't be a mayor and oversee an entire city and not, <laughs> not be able to tell what's going on. You're smart, too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, <laughs> I, I, yes, I am, yes. I am. I just, I, again, uh, modesty, <laughs> not one of my strong suits is growing up. But <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like, yeah, goes there. <laughs> <laughs> We're having this conversation. <laughs> Chef, what are you doing right now? I, I want to know if I see what's going on. Okay, here. so sh- why don't Shaft and Falzer and both make me, um, make me a perception check? Fourteen. It's a nat twenty for me. What? The dice are on fire over in the audience house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you both clearly see Bryn uh, walk over and kind of silently pull this box you know with uh with blake lakely his back to to you know behind his desk basically what? and then i duck down is there a portrait on the opposite wall there's a portrait on every single wall in this room so i'm gonna go over and go this one really captures you i really like the way this the, the shady <laughs> i mean look at this come here come here look at this you see how the color on the side of your face here it just blends in so smoothly the only thing i was gonna say actually is that you look far more slim in person than the artist uh, captured here, Mayor. You know, I don't think this actually does you justice for how svelte and fit of a mayor that you are. 
<laughs> Could you both roll me a deception check with advantage? Oh, nice. Oh, even better. Uh, that'd be an 18. Yeah, so I have an 18 too. All right, so Thuff's going to roll an insight check. He gets lower, so he is buying everything you're saying just as well as Blake Lakely is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good theft. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I, I, uh, Thuff, Thuff guess he does. I'm going to look back at Bren and go, what? Just in, in mouth. Well, you shouldn't be able to. When he's not looking, I go. If, if it went the way I thought, you shouldn't be able to see me because I'm yeah, behind so, the Yeah, so desk. Brit is now kind of ducked behind this desk. I'm like crouched. Outside. All right. Yeah. So, so Bren, you So what am I seeing box. in this box? <laughs> Got a couple of latches, you know, okay. as you kind of open it up. It's So, yeah, it was like an 18-inch kind of wide. And as you pull it out, it's, it's only about 12 deep. Do you need me to be by myself so the rest of the party doesn't hear what's in the box? Hmm, that's a good question. We I just keep... really want to have a private session. <laughs> I, I missed my private session. You're jealous? Session, like everyone well. The private session. Well, I'm just kidding. I mean, as long Here, as you we think... We can all sit here. We'll just take our headphones off. Sure. Do the, Yeah, do that quick. Well, Bill's going to be able to hear me, but just not you, so... That's fine. He won't hear my description, right? I'm just curious. Like, you no, never no, know what's you, in you here, might right? Want, you might want to pocket some of this stuff. You never know. Exactly. Absolutely. So so you open it up, and it's kind of... It's lined in this, like, purple velvet... And okay. it's it's clear that there are some depressions where like other items used to be housed in this box. Like maybe they're judged from what Blake Lakely said about offering help. Like he's clearly like offered some items from this box to maybe other other people. Okay. In that you see a uh, a small like cr- crudely carved uh, wooden figure. Uh, it looks like uh, kind of resembles a badger, and it's like maybe like like four inches long kind of thing. There's a there's a cloth bag, and uh, as you open it, you, inside there's kind of there's these six smooth, like flat stones. You know, kind of like the uh, stone you would use to like skip across water. Okay. Next to them, there's this pair of uh, what looks like like ear plugs, and if you go to pick them up, they feel very heavy. They're kind of weighted. And the last thing in there, uh, just these four items, is a a vial that's filled with with a translucent liquid and if you kind of look take a closer look at it you can see in f- floating inside of it there's uh, what looks like a, a miniature horse and it's uh, it's smaller than like even a fingernail because it kind of looks like this like comatose mini horse like floating around in, in this vial oh my gosh and then that, that's it just these four items what the heck <laughs> <laughs> Not what I was expecting. <laughs> uh, so, what do you want to do? You want to you want to pocket these this stuff? Yeah, if I can. Yes, absolutely, you can. If I can, yes. Yep. This is all kind of on under your your nice stealth roll. So, yeah, you can you can certainly uh, empty it out. Yep. So, you want to close it up and, and put it back? I would like to. Yeah. Okay, so roll me another sleight of hand, then to put to put this back. Twenty. Okay, you you successfully uh, get it back into its recess, and now you're kind of uh, free to like join this this schmoozy conversation that they're they're having with yeah. uh, with Blake. Lakers. So I just like pop it back in the wall, and I uh, look around and find a portrait on the wall by me, and I'm like, oh yeah, look at this one. You're looking sexy. <laughs> and, and Blake Lakely is fully schmoozed. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 of course. <laughs> Blake Lakely yeah, is always looking sexy. And uh, the rest of the party takes that as a sign that uh, I've done what I need to do. And I just start kind of walking around. It would be awesome to sit around here and look at these pictures all day, but we do have a job to do. So That's true. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Lakely, or sorry, Blake, uh, so now we're on first name basis, uh, I shake his hand and go. Uh, we have to uh, to take off. Uh, yes, of course, of course. Yes, yes. Please, please. I, I, I do hope. <laughs> I know, I know. I was a little, uh, little despondent upon you as you first arrived, but boy, you, you lots sure have grown on Blake Langley. I, uh, I pat him on the head. I, I do hope. Oh, uh, 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 thank you, thank you. As he kind of combs back his quaff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do hope it is you that uh, that gets to get paid for this job. We will. Now, you, you five, uh, you, you are always welcome in Golden. You betcha. I walk out the yeah, door. Yeah, Brin's follow chef. Yeah, I'm following as well. Quick, quickly, and we go back to the yeah. church. 
as you well as you exit his office, the the, the two guards. They're kind of yeah. like trying to c- cover up a snicker as they've kind of overheard this, <laughs> this bullshit. From All Florida. right. I I look at him and give him the finger. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get back to this church. What you find? What you find? Mm. You guys. Are the guards down there in the in the foyer? Yeah. So those six guards are still down in, uh, in the reception area. They kind of stuck around just in case. You see the one that Mother Celeste gave the note to, kind of patting himself down, you know, turning out his pockets. He just kind of cocks his head with a confused look on his face. And they see you, it's like, yeah, all right, your, your business done with the mayor? Oh, yeah, we gotta go back. So, uh, back to the church then? Yep. Yeah. All right, they're gonna continue to escort you. They're gonna escort us, okay. Yeah, they're gonna continue to take you. I'm, church. as we're walking, I'm gonna look at the note and see what it says. It, it just says to to lend aid to the half orc. Okay. Uh, to answer Gozer's question, Bryn will look at her and be like, "Not now, Gozer. All right? Because the guards. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Bryn's yeah. not going to say anything. Boy, boy, King, I I sure like that guy. He nice. Did you like him too? Sure. But but not more than Thuff, right? No. Good. Good. Thuff Thuff could be mayor. Thuff could be mayor. Thuff be good mayor. Can, can Thuff get can Thuff, Thuff get picture of Thuff? Maybe. Okay, okay, King. <laughs> <laughs> the guards take you back to back to the church, and uh, you know they kind of let you guys you enter, and they they do file in behind you. Okay, I don't walk up to Mother Celestia and say, uh, "Well, we spoke we spoke to Mister uh, Mayor Lakely Blake, as we call him." And uh, he said that, don't worry about the statue, uh, he'd take care of it, and uh, he gave me this note to tell you to take care of uh, of Gozer here. She takes the note from you, reads it. Can you make me a deception check with advantage? Oh, I'm glad I had advantage. Uh, 23. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, okay, okay. I Very well, very well. It's all the same, doesn't matter where the money comes from, the golden lady always shines upon me. And yeah, so she steps up to steps up to go there, and this this process is a little more involved, as it takes a little stronger magic to rid you of of uh, this this whatever the, this weird dream affliction thing that's that's taken away your max hit points, and uh, you you feel you feel stronger. You you know you're not you're not healed back those missing points, but your maximum is now back to its its regular total. And you, that kind of draining, that drained feel kind of just slides away as you, as you start to feel more normal. I'm going to stretch. And and look at her and be like, sorry. And then walk away. (laughs) Before she even responds. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the, the six guards, they kind of step aside and let you guys filter out if that's what you're doing. What uh, can you give me a breakdown on our uh, basically our time frame we've been here in uh, Goldham? So now you guys have probably been in here. It's cu- probably coming on about evening, I bet, maybe five or six. So maybe like three or four hours from basically like the outskirts, and then you know the fight with the the bull, and then now all this this back and forth between these two offices. Okay, I say we got to get the hell out of here. Uh, we're on a we're on a pretty strict time limit, Chef, here, right? Just can you think we could spare you know thirty seconds or a minute for me to chat with this Mother Celesta before we leave? Yeah, make it quick. Uh, okay. Mother Celesta, I yeah. don't know if we've introduced been introduced. I'm Falzern. I'm curious. I don't. Uh, I'm not a man of much gold, but I'm always in the market for magic potions magical items, magical knowledge. Do you have anything like that, or is anyone in the city who might be selling something like that? Oh, well, oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, we, we, do, we do have our outlet of magic, magic, magic in here in Gotham. You don't say! They've, they've <laughs> thankfully not been, not been affected by the goings-on. Uh, but my, my, myself, I strictly just uh, you deal in healing. Sell, sell out my, 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 my personal abilities. No no trinkets or potions as such. Okay, that's fair. 
As Falzerin talks to her, Bryn went over and lit two more candles. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Now, I think I'm actually in she need of healing. takes a seat waiting for him. So I'm going to ask her, say, you know, I'm a little bit tired myself, Mother Celeste. Do you think before we leave you could... I don't think it will take much to heal for my needs, but maybe before we leave you might be able to impart a bit of healing on me as well. Are you hitting on her? Well, that's open <laughs> interpretation. <laughs> oh, so you'd like to feel the touch of this old woman, would you? <laughs> <laughs> when in Goldham. Okay, so 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 mechanic mechanically, I mean, I know I I, I didn't actually really go over um, the size of the die on the on the uh, what she's doing or what she's actually doing mechanically. So um, basically, what Thuff what goes are paid for for Thuff was just like a level one cure wounds. For her, it's a, a, a D8 plus two, which I maxed to the ten, right? That's what I was hoping to buy. Yeah. You just so you can you can you can pay for a higher level of that spell. It just it adds one more D8 to the per level, right? Like like right. you would if you were upcasting it if you had that ability. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I think that's all I need if okay. she's willing to sell me that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, or are uh, you selling yourself? Well. I mean, you know, goods and services, whatever needs to be exchanged. Okay, well, well. Uh, again, as 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 the, the the golden lady Joaquin, she says, everything for a price, free market and all that. So um, it'll cost you twenty gold pieces. That seems fair. So I I pull out twenty gold from my pouch and hand it to her. Excellent. And then she she heals you uh, ten ten uh, hit points. Uh, any any else of you, anyone else uh, in need of, of my services? I, I am I am growing a little weak as is it, it took quite a bit of power for this one as she motions so goes there. I'm over at the door and I go, nope, we're good. Let's get out of here. You said it was evening time, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bryn, uh, Bryn knows she could use a little healing, but uh, she gets up off her pew and uh, walks out. Okay, great. And uh, as you finally leave this church, the guards, uh, you know, unaccosted, allow you to just leave, and they, they're they not following you. They're not, not going <laughs> to follow you everywhere you go in the city now that you're away from Mother Celesta. is no longer a threat to her, at least for now. Was there evidence when we were in the church that she fixed those stone people? They actually, when you got in there, uh, there were only two statues, whereas originally there was the three. Right. Okay. So she either fixed one or he got up and walked away as a statue. Yeah, that's about it, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, where are we going, buddies? Uh, we're going to the tower. Is that uh, what, what we want to do? What about <laughs> yes. magic, magic, magic? I say with enthusiasm. Uh, I'll tell you what. Um, where's that rock you had? Go go tower in morning? The rock? What, what rock? Yeah, that fancy rock you had that you could talk to uh, people. Yeah. You mean the one that Isabella, Isabella talked to me with? Yeah, the, that one. Um, I have it. Why, why do you ask? Can I take a look at it? Uh, well, what do you want to do with it? I'm, I'm not sure. Do you want to talk to Isabella? I just want to take a look at it. It's, it could be important. Okay, that's fair. Are you going to give it back to me when you're done? Oh, hell yeah. You can have it okay. back. I'm not so I, I, I pull it out and hand it over to Joan. Or I look at it. What's it look like? It just looks like this uh, kind of small, oval, polished piece of iron. No real distinguishable features to it. So it's not a stone? It is not a stone. No, it's, it's made okay. of iron. Okay. Uh, how's it work? I don't know, to be honest, Shaft. Um, it seems to be similar, at least from what I can tell, to a spell that I have. Um, yeah. I have a spell that I can use to communicate with people over a certain amount of distance, and it's essentially like I'm whispering in their ear or talking in their head, however you want to think about it. You did that to me! Yes, so, I did. So you tap Freaky, on it? You tap on well, it I don't know how to activate it. Um, Isabella, Dr. Good, just... Oh, she contacted you. You didn't contact That's her. That's right. That's the first time it's ever oh. happened, and it hasn't happened again since. I, I talk into it. Hey, baby. Hey, can you hear me? Can you? Ha where do you hear back? Does it come through the rock, or I mean, through the through the thing? Shaft, are you, are you sure you want to talk to Doctor Good? 
You sure you trust well, her? Can you do it? I, ha- I hand it back to you. I don't know how to act. Can you contact her? I don't know how to activate it, but I I'm not sure. Do we trust her? Well, well I mean, she's gonna she's gonna be here relatively soon. I just wanted to to have a chat real quick before we get the hell out of here. Can you can you try? I mean, maybe it's something with your voice. I I guess. Why do you wanna Why do you wanna talk to Isabella? Look, guys, I'm gonna level with you here. I don't think Isabella's on the up and up. And I think we got to get the hell out of here relatively quickly, because if she comes here, I don't think we're going to make it to the tower. And that's our show. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. For your own musical inquiries, contact jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All other music and ambient noise is courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. The Incursible Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com for all of your graphic design needs. You can find more info on the characters and world at incursibleparty.com. Enjoying the show? Have any questions or rules corrections? Email us. Contact at incursibleparty.com or reach out on social media. The Incursible Party on Facebook and Instagram at IncouragablePar on Twitter using the hashtag AfterPartyIP for a shout out during our behind the screen after party episodes that drop every fourth release. Happy adventuring!